Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of April. Temperatures soar in parts of India as summers hit early. Sri Lankans celebrate New Year at anti-government protest site. And activists in Germany demonstrate against enforced disappearances in Balochistan. And now for all the details. A severe bout of heat wave spells swept parts of India on Thursday as summers have hit early. The weather office predicted heat wave conditions were likely to continue in isolated places for the next two days, intensifying into severe category by April 17. Soaring temperatures in parts of India continued to affect daily life on Thursday as heat wave tightened its grip across the country. Sudden switch to summers and a short spring have broken several records for one of the hottest Aprils in several decades in India. People in northern Kanpur city were seen covering themselves to screen themselves from the sizzling sun. IMD, the India Meteorological Department predicted Heat wave conditions in isolated pockets of northern, central and western India were likely to continue during April 14 to 16, while severe heat wave was expected by April 17. Meanwhile, some children were seen taking a dip in a pond in Indian capital New Delhi to beat the heat, while daily commuters drank juices to prevent dehydration as the maximum temperature hovered around 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Summers in India are a difficult time when scorching temperatures sometimes lead to casualties. Possible reasons for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization, leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday inaugurated the Pradhan Mantri Sangrahale, a museum dedicated to all Prime Ministers since independence. Built and opened during the celebration of 75 years of independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the museum tells the story of India after independence through the lives and contributions of its Prime Ministers. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday inaugurated the Pradhan Mantri Sangrale, a museum dedicated to 14 former Prime Ministers of the country since independence at the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library Complex in capital New Delhi. Prime Minister Modi also bought the first ticket to make his way inside the museum. The building includes over 40 galleries on the lives and tenures of former Prime Ministers as well as a sound and light show. According to Prime Minister's office, the museum is aimed at sensitizing and inspiring the younger generation about the leadership, vision and achievements of all Indian Prime Ministers. Speaking at the inauguration event, Prime Minister Modi said the museum will become a source of inspiration for future generations and the youth will be able to witness the difficulties each Prime Minister faced. प्रत्येक सरकार की साझा विरासत का जीवंत प्रतिबिंब बन गया है देश के हर प्रधानमंत्री ने अपने समय की अलग-अलग चुनौतियों को पार करते हुए देश को आगे ले जाने की कोशिश की है देश की जनता विशेषकर युवा वर्ग भावी पीढ़ी सभी the design of the museum building is inspired by the story of rising India, shaped and molded by the hands of its leaders. The design incorporates sustainable and energy conservation practices. No tree has been felt or transplanted during the course of work on the project. In news from Sri Lanka. 
hundreds of Sri Lankas ushered into the celebrations of their traditional New Year along with anti-government protests in capital Colombo on Thursday as the country faces its worst economic crisis in decades. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in a statement urged the nation for unity and better understanding to overcome the crisis together. Hundreds of Sri Lankans flanked saffron-robed Buddhist monks in a milk-boiling ceremony to mark the Sinhala and Tamil New Year in front of Presidential Secretariat in Colombo on Thursday in a new form of protest against President Gotabaya Rajapaksa over the ongoing economic crisis. The island nation of 22 million people is in the throes of its worst financial crisis since independence in 1948 with a foreign currency shortage stalling imports of fuel and medicines. Thousands of people have taken to the streets to denounce the government led by Rajpaksa. We normally stay at home with families celebrating New Year, but this year it's different. So we are um, uh, together as a Sri Lankan nation and we want the president to uh, step down. In a New Year's message, President Rajpaksa asked for unity and better understanding to overcome the worst crisis in decades. Sri Lanka's finance minister Ali Sabri earlier in an interview said the next six to nine months will be very difficult and sought nearly four billion US dollars loan program for the International Monetary Fund ahead of the negotiations on April 18. The United States on Wednesday congratulated Shehbaz Sharif on becoming Pakistan's new Prime Minister following the ouster of his predecessor in a parliamentary no-confidence vote with the top US diplomat reaffirming the value of the relationship between the two nations. Shehbaz took oath as the 23rd Prime Minister of Pakistan on Monday. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken congratulated Shehbaz Sharif on Wednesday on becoming the new Prime Minister of Pakistan. Pakistan has been an important partner on wide-ranging mutual interests for nearly 75 years and we value our relationship, Blinken said in a statement. The warm tone of Blinken's statement appeared to signal a desire to repair ties damaged by former Prime Minister Imran Khan's harsh anti-U.S. rhetoric and his unproven charges that Washington engineered his dismissal. Blinken's statement came two days after the Western-friendly Sharif 70 took the oath of office following days of political turmoil leading to Khan's dismissal in Pakistan's first no-confidence vote since gaining independence from Britain in 1947. Khan, a former cricket star turned politician, sought to derail the vote by dissolving parliament and calling early elections after claiming that Washington was colluding with his opponents to oust him. Khan provided no proof of his allegations, which the United States denied. Pakistan's highest court declared Khan's actions unconstitutional and ordered the vote to proceed. A majority of parliament's lower house supported his ouster on Sunday. Earlier, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby said that the United States enjoyed a healthy military-to-military -military relationship with the Pakistan Army and hoped that his engagement will also continue in the future. Uh, we recognize that we have shared interests with Pakistan with respect to security and stability in that part of the world. A and um, we, we do have a, a, a healthy military-to-military -military relationship with Pakistani armed forces and we have every expectation that that will be able to continue to be the case. Meanwhile, analysts say they do not expect Washington to seek a significant broadening of ties, but to remain mostly focused on security cooperation, especially on counterterrorism and Afghanistan. Moving on, members of Baloch National Movement staged a demonstration recently in Germany's Chemnitz against enforced disappearances by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. The activists claimed Baloch people are living under the shadow of the Pakistani military, which has continued to pursue its infamous kill and dump policy. They blamed Baloch activists are forcibly disappeared before being killed in staged encounters to muzzle any dissent, while Islamabad exploits local natural resources in the region. Activists have been protesting worldwide to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. Baloj political activists, doctors, journalists and students are addicted, tortured, killed or never come back. The victims are taken away in daylight from shops, hotels, public buses, university, homes and workplaces. 
Despite all these major issues, Balochistan is still ignored by the national media. In news from Nepal, eight-year-old Ojaswi Ghulu was appointed living goddess Kumari of Panauti, an ancient town in Nepal in 2014. She lives a normal life like other kids except when there are major festivals during which she is worshipped. After the living goddess enters her adolescence and begins her first menstruation, the search of new Kumari starts. Ojaswi's mother, however, plans to opt to retire her at the age of nine. Ojaswi Gulu was only eight months old when she was anointed the living goddess Kumari of Panauti, an ancient town in Nepal, after a gap of eight decades. It was a moment of pride for the ancient city as it revived the almost extinct cultural practice in 2014. The eight-year-old Kumari lives a normal life like any other kids except when there are major festivals during which she is worshipped. During the festivity, she has to get up early in the morning, freshen up and put on the regalia and get herself decorated. The goddess appears in regalia only twice a year and is worshipped on the Shain and Ram Navni festival. She also attends school. However, in order to maintain the sanctity, the living goddess only takes part in functions that are held inside the home or the family. The principal of her school, Bishnu Prasad Dahal, said, The school authorities were very sensitive about the goddess and the area around her is kept clean and she is given a separate place to eat. The anointment of Kumari in Panauti doesn't follow the procedure of Kathmandu for similar ritual. In Nepal, after the living goddess enters her adolescence and begins her first menstruation, the search for new Kumari starts. Ojaswi's mother, however, plans to opt to retire her at the age of nine. As per her, Panoti possibly would get a new living goddess next to she. In Nepal's traditions, a living goddess is seen as a form of Hindu goddess, being the symbol of religious tolerance, while a number of people here in the Himalayan nation come from the Buddhist background. For centuries, the goddesses were used by kings to legitimize their rules. Thousands of devotees throng the famous Golden Temple and the pilgrimage site of Haridwar in northern India to offer prayers and take a holy dip to mark the harvest festival of Besakhi on Thursday. Meanwhile, people in northeastern Assam state dressed in traditional finery and danced on drum beats to celebrate Bihu, their traditional New Year. Hundreds of Sikh devotees on Thursday offered prayers and took a holy dip at the famous Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to mark the harvest festival of Baisakhi. The festival also holds a special significance for the Sikhs, as on this day, in the year 1699, the 10th Sikh spiritual leader Guru Gobind Singh established the Khalsa Panth, a community of initiated Sikhs, a key event in the history of Sikhism. Guru Gobind Singh Ji ने 1699 Thousands of Hindu devotees also took a holy dip in river Ganges in the pilgrim town of Haridwar to mark the auspicious occasion. Besakhi is especially celebrated by farmers as they harvest the wheat crop and share their produce as offering at religious sites as gratitude. Meanwhile, people in northeastern Assam state dressed in traditional finery and danced on drum beats to celebrate Bihu, their traditional New Year and Harvest Festival. Bihu is a time of merriment and feasting, and celebrations in general continue for about seven days. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन